people let you know we are live. Greetings. Okay. Welcome to the Increda chat on Incredicon with tonight's special guest star, George Medina. Um, and you know, Mike and the other Mike is with me, Grazia. So tonight we're going to do a good show talking comics, Wonder Duck, I guess, right? Yes, sir. Yes. And, uh, some other cool things. So join the chat. Obviously, you know how to find us. Um, share us out with all the other cool pages that you belong to. And uh, We'll be answering your questions live here on the Incredit Chat tonight. All right, let's get started. All right. Um, you want to let's begin with uh, telling us a little bit about yourself, George. Uh, your comic career, maybe the kind of stuff you do. Sure. Uh, I started uh, comics back in like really going into comics back in two thousand and three. I want to say. Okay. Um, I met a, a buddy of mine at uh, SBA School of Visual Arts. I went there for like. Uh, it's a, like a life drawing course. And he was starting up like an independent publisher. And he said, hey, George, do you want to you have like a character? I'm starting a, a combo company. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. So uh, the character that I introduced there was Rust by 377, which is a character that I had been working on back in like 99 or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that was like my start into the independent publishing. Uh, okay. And that's how I got started there, yeah. All right, that's cool. Um, and uh, so you're, you're going back early 2000s. You started, but you created your character in the uh, in the in the late 90s. Yeah. Um, can you say his name again? It was a little your character's uh, name. Yeah, it was Russ five three seven seven. Russ three five seven seven. How about you tell us a little bit a bit about Russ? Yeah, sure. Um, so right before I created the character, I was working at an orphanage. It was like a, a home for like young kids and oh, wow. it was data entry work. I was doing data okay. entry work. I wasn't like a social worker or anything. And um, I remember when I was inputting the information into the computer, I came across the name. It was uh, Nonami. And I was like, wow, that's a cool name, Nonami. Like it's, it's got a nice sound to it. I'm talking to my supervisor and check out this name. I like it. He's like, no, that's no name. The kid has no name. You know, I was in, inputting the information. Wow. And I was like, wow, what if, what if I did a story about this kid who didn't want to be here, who wanted to escape, who wanted to get out? And I gave him superpowers and he became Russ. So Russ became this character who is in an orphanage, who he thinks is an orphanage, but really is something else. And when he discovers what it is, it's time for him to get the heck out of there. And that was that was Russ. And that's actually what I have if you see it behind me. Um, the graphic right. was, uh, yeah, I put the if graphic. You wanna, if you want to grab it and, and show it to the camera, I'll give you the screen so everyone can see it. Yeah. And I see Wonder Duck back there. Bring that for later. Yeah, yeah, no, I got it. Let me get okay. that for you. All right. So let's see, uh, Russ. Well, this is this is Russ. Um, it's a hundred. The the graphic novel itself. Let me see if I can do it this way. Oh, yeah, cool. one hundred and forty four pages. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's all in full color. I okay. did it in the span of, I don't know, did, I started doing the story back in 2009, and it was like a five-year project to put okay. this thing out. Um, yes, and uh, this is the back cover there. Did you do, Russ, as individual books and then collected it into the trade? I did. I did. This is the actual, this is the uh, single issue. Okay. Actually, 1999 is when I created him, and hmm. so this would be his 21st year. So this is 21 years of Russ. So what I did was I printed out all of the uh, chapters of the book, one through six, as individual hmm. comics. Yeah. Okay. And I've actually printed them all out yet. So they all they are all out right now. It's like a limited run that I have, and it's uh, I was actually going to debut it at the um, at the East Coast Comic Con, which unfortunately was uh, canceled. Yeah. Well, I, well, that yeah, was canceled. Now I didn't even. I was canceled. I knew it was postponed. Yeah, it was. They they postponed it and moved it to like July fourth. Yeah, and Something then like we, that. yeah, and then we got the uh, the message that it was completely canceled. It was canceled. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get that one yet. I wasn't yeah. supposed to be. I was going to go with a with a friend who was going to be at the show, but oh, um, okay. yeah, yeah. but I was just going to go hang out that weekend. Um, yeah. and uh, so let's let's get you. Um, Hello, Anibal. Is that how correct? I I hope I said that name right. Aniba, yeah, that's my friend. That's my friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he's a good guy. Uh, Joe Holly. Holly, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up, Joe? 
So, um, so yeah, we got. So you had you had Russ, and Russ took you five years to put together. Um, so was this your was Russ like your first crack at making comics, or did you do any before to build up? To so, Russ? so okay, so before Russ, I did everything like I would fold like an eight and a half piece of paper in half and draw comics on it and color it and. There was mm-hmm. no script. It was just whatever came to my mind. I was just drawing. Okay. So Russ was actually the first time I worked on a like eleven by seventeen sheet of paper, scanned it in, colored it in Photoshop. So before mm-hmm. Russ, yeah, I was like, I mean, Wonderduck actually was created back in the early nineties. I was like a huge fan of uh, of the Disney Afternoon. You know, like the we're gonna the, we're gonna talk then. Yeah. <laughs> I got to- yeah. So that's but this but this uh, but Russ was really my first step into how to create comics the traditional way, like okay, you know, well the way and, the pro did it, yeah. And when you created Russ to started drawing the comic, did you have plans that it was going to be six issues, or are you just going to do one? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so because that that's a large venture for someone who's never really yeah. done a big story. Right. So what I wanted to, and I started drawing the comic at first. I, I was mm-hmm. the initial artist on it, and then. I remember sending it out, and I remember, I remember sending it out to uh, to get a review, and they killed me. They were like, "You are what approaches the the colors like gout, like gaudy." They were just they killed it. So I was like, you know what? Maybe I should hire an artist, revamp the story, and come back. So the initial run of Rust is totally different than what I have now. Okay. But yeah, it was like it was like it was like an eye opener. I was like, "Holy cow!" I need to either get better or just hire an artist to work on this book for me. And yeah. so I opted for the for the latter. I hired an artist and they Joe Ryan. what I drew it. What I wrote it, yeah. Okay. That that's that's interesting. I, and I mean some people do that. I've never uh hired anyone for my work. I've I've talked about it, but yeah. at the end of the day, my I, if I'm going to hire anyone, it's going to be a colorist, to be honest, just because of the way I handle colors. But um, I just like – it's not a control thing for me. I just like doing the work so much I that you. I don't like to have it away from me and wait for other people to give it. It's like, let me just do this now, you know? And Well, yeah, if you can do it. I mean, if I could have done it, I would have done it myself. Like, yeah. I, You know what I mean? I, it was just that the, the fact that, you know what, maybe I just need a stronger artist to do it. That's, but, you know, I mean, it was, it was your first first one, really, so – you know, yeah. are you when when it came to Wonder Duck, did you draw that one? No, no, same artist oh, actually same did artist. that okay. as well. And, and so, go, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, Mike. No, 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 go, go first. No, I was gonna say going back to Russ, you had asked me whether I thought it was gonna be a six issue run. So yeah. when I when when I started doing, you know, when I started getting into the comics, everybody was doing six issue art, like just arcs, even within the professional comic. They were like, Oh, yeah. six issue. So I was like, you know what? Let me do a six issue arc. This is gonna be like the introduction to the story. If it takes off, I'll do more issues and, you know, go that, go that route. So I left it so that I can actually write an ongoing story, mm-hmm. you know? And so that's what Rust was. It was originally going to be six issues and then that's what I finished with. And I had the graphic novel done and then, you know, writing just additional stories after that, which yeah, yeah. I am doing now. So it's just a matter of putting it down. Okay. All right. Um, let's get to Wonder Duck real quick. Cause you mentioned the mm-hmm. Disney afternoon yes. and, Earlier today, I don't know if you watched it, or I did a stream on here teaching uh, character design, yeah. and I talked a lot about the Disney Afternoon because that was the influence for my Plunger Pup character. Mm-hmm. So tell us about how the Disney Afternoon influenced you into creating Wonder Duck. Okay, so I I wasn't born here. I was born in Ecuador when I was a little kid, and Disney, Walt Disney was like a big, I was like, Walt Disney was everything. I was like, I want to create characters just like he did, and, and you know, I was like, little kid and so in the what was it late 80s early 90s you know yeah. came out. and you know and the gummy bears and you know tailspin and all those shows came out classic yeah. And, yeah. yeah and i remember and i remember um the ducktales had a character called gizmo duck yes and gizmo duck was like my favorite character in the whole story and i was like you know what i want like a superhero like gizmo duck so i created Wonder Duck, and I. If you see the initial drawings from when I was like a kid drawing this thing, it looked like Gizmo Duck without the wheel. It was just like all the gadgets and everything like that. And as I got older, I was, I was like, you know what? I don't want to get sued. So I obviously changed them up, gave them like a like a story, and then I, I started, you know, writing the uh, 
the it, this this is like eight issues. So this is four. The first four issues are in the graphic novel, but um, and I'm working on the second half now. But that's how Wonder Dog came about. It was just from that, from just the influence of the. Uh, of the you know. No, that's great. And and even though Gizmo Duck was your favorite, was Ducktales your favorite cartoon of that block, or did you yeah. have others that you enjoyed yeah, was, a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. It, I, I mean, I enjoyed Dark and Duck also, but yeah. but. Duckbill was definitely the one that I that I enjoyed. Yeah. The most, yeah. Darkwing helped influence my plunger pup a lot. Did he? Okay. Yeah, well, because of the character Megavolt. Uh, just oh, a little yeah. side story. He had a, a little prongs up there, and I said, you know, yeah. if you put a stick there, it looks like a plunger. And when I was drawing it, I was homesick, and I thought he was a dog, not a rat. So <laughs> I drew a dog with a plunger on his head, and that's how. There he is, Megavolt. Oh yeah, there he is. And um, Darkwing Duck. Yeah. <laughs> And it's actually, cool. the original costume looked a lot like it, just like you did with Gizmo. I had the yeah. I had these straps coming down into a circle, and the plunger was the symbol. And um, yeah, but yeah, it's, but it's, yeah, it's, I, I remember because and, and I think I think uh, Darkwing Duck was like maybe one of the first spinoff cartoons because I think um, One Punch Man Quack went from mm -hmm. Dark from Ducktales into Darkwing Duck, like it was like a spinoff yeah. show. And yeah, I, I I like that one too. You know, just uh, even the introduction, like the whole thing, all of his, yeah. his bad guys and battles. But yeah, wow, that's uh, that's great. I mean, I could sit, I can literally sit and talk to you for hours about the the Disney afternoon. Yeah. I actually have like, right behind me somewhere all the all the DVDs from that they've ever released for it. So really, yeah, it's, that's it's fantastic. Um, I I watch them a good, you know couple of few times a year i'll choose a show and i'll just yeah. do i'll do like an entire day while i'm in my studio um and uh and you know i pick different different ones to do but now that they're on disney plus that's that's even better yeah no i know i subscribe to disney plus and, and some nights i just throw one on and i'm like oh this is cool let's just, let's watch this you so know? i got a yeah. question here I love disney plus now, which is the best part i mean you can watch all yeah. of them yeah exactly. yeah so we got a question here. I'm going to put it up on the screen. And it says, hey, Michael, ask George about getting books ready to send to the printer with crazy team and old school Sharpies, LOL. <laughs> so, all right. So remember when I told you I met this guy at the School of Visual Arts? His name uh, was Sam Bear. He had this, he had the, the combo company that he started was Crazy Comics. Okay. So Crazy Comics started out and we would print out our own books uh, we drew our own books, and I think it was like the third issue of Rust that I was drawing. And I, we were, the deadline was like the next, like maybe like a week from when we were doing this. And we had to get these books done because we had to get them to the printer. So we all split, we all said, all right, um, Aniba, you take pages one through six, I'll do six through 12. Sam, you do, you know, whatever, the rest of the pages. And so we're all here working, inking this book. And Sam grabs a Sharpie, just like a Sharpie, just starts hacking at this page that I drew because he's like, hey, we got to get this thing done. But he used like, a, like, it wasn't even like, you know, one of those thin Sharpies. It was like a thick Sharpie. He was just killing the, I'm like, what are you doing, Sam? And ever since that day, we've always talked about how the Sharpie story, like how he just hacked my whole book with this Sharpie because he's like, we got to get it done. You weren't here on time. We got to get it done. So yeah, that's what he always talked about, the Sharpie story. <laughs> That's great. great. And yeah. um, so let, let, let me, let, I mean, we're going to continue with comics, but let me ask you yeah. convention wise, when did you start doing conventions? Uh, back in 04, I want to say it was a big Apple con before it was at the Penn yeah. Plaza. Before it was at the, okay. so you're talking, yeah. wait, before it was at the Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Was that, was it still at the church basement? At the church. Yeah. 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 That's where I, that's where I got my start on shows too. Yep, that was my first show when it was still when it was still there. We went there, we were gung ho, man. We had like five hundred copies of each book, self printed, folded in half. We stapled it ourselves, and we're like, we're gonna, yeah. we're about to kill this show. And we did. I mean, we did pretty well because we were all hyped up, and we're like, oh, this is gonna be the next big thing. You're gonna see cartoons of this coming out soon. Buy it now. You know, get it signed. And we were we were like salesmen. So that was my first convention. That, that's, that's when we first started doing conventions. That's right. I think a lot of people I know started at the at the Big Apple shows. Mm -hmm. um, yes. What do you what shows wise now? How many shows a year do you normally do? Even though they're closed now, but um, well, when, I mean, I stepped away from doing shows for a while because I was just working on uh, on a lot of these books. But at one point, we were doing we were doing I'd say about six or seven shows a year. Like really? we were 
out there. We were doing, yeah, we did. I remember we did Emerald City one year. We went to uh, we went to uh, San Diego Comic Con, Heroes, um, a bunch of you know the, the big Apple ones that were here. Yeah. So you, like so you you hit the you hit the bigger shows then. Yeah, well, you okay. know, Chiller. We did we hit Chiller. Um, oh, you did Chiller, nice. Yeah, some of the shows that we did, I mean, they're, they're probably, I mean, some of them may not even be around anymore, like just local little shows. Yeah. I feel like now they're popping up more, like especially in Jersey, like you'll see a lot of shows in Jersey. Oh, yeah, totally. There are shows yeah. everywhere. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, but yeah, we've, uh, yeah, we used to do a lot of shows back in the days. So with the quarantine right now, how are you handling, you know, selling your books and, uh, you know, and, and just art in general right now? Yeah, so I'm working with uh, J.M. DeSantis and his company is called Dark Fire Press. He's the publisher. I, I, I know him, yes. And, yeah, you know J.M., yeah, he's a cool yes. guy. So he's actually been, you know, he, you know, I signed a contract with him. We're printing out Wonder Duck and he's publishing Wonder Duck for me. And he's actually, with everything that's going on now, there are a lot of groups on Facebook and there's a big movement to try to get some of our books into some of these stores to supplement, in, in a sense, the fact that they're not getting any any of the uh, big guys out there, because this because Diamond has stopped the distribution. Well, I was gonna say, do you you don't go through Diamond, you're the right no, or no? no. So, no. and your and your book Wonder Duck is now up on Amazon, correct? Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, okay. yeah, it's on Comicsology so, as well. Yeah. Okay, so there's there's lots of ways to get to yeah. get your book. Yeah. So, Wonder Duck is probably a little bigger for you than Russ. Yeah, would you say? Yeah. So tell us a little bit, obviously Gizmo Duck inspired, but tell us a little bit about the story that you can yeah, to yeah. get people yeah. interested in it. Sure. Um, so the story basically is um, there's a war on two different planets and the scientist who creates the battle suit for one particular planet has decided that he's going to basically go rogue and work for the bad guy, sells those, um, sells those uh, suits to them and he gets caught. He decides to get rid of one of the one of these uh, suits into outer space, and it lands on another planet, and it strikes a uh, down down luck duck named Duke Dobby, and he becomes Wonder Duck. And so the story is almost like a story of redemption because now this scientist has to go back to his old uh, planet and beg for forgiveness for what he's done because uh -huh. he's put them in a bad situation where now that guy that he sold those suits to is coming to attack his own planet. So that's kind of like where the story uh, goes off and it goes from there. Interesting. Well, I, I think you might have a sale for me now. That's, I, I, I love Wonder I'm Duck sorry. and Plunger Pup. Yeah, Wonder Duck and Plunger Pup. I was going to say that. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, no, I love, for me personally, I love stories like animal sci-fi. Yeah. You know that that's all that's all my my stuff is with plunger pup. So, yeah. but I'm not here to sell me. I'm here to I'm here to <laughs> hear your stuff. And uh, and so, in addition, we're, we'll we'll come back to comics. I know we will. But yeah. um, I want to talk about your podcast, your Catch Duck Rays podcast, because yeah. I've actually been on it. It was a yeah. fun experience. Yeah. And tell us about how that started and how long you've been doing it for, and uh, that I was your favorite guest. And yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Come back. We need you to come back. I'll be happy um, to. Yeah. No. So, catch the craze was basically started back in around the same time as Crazy Comics. Okay. Okay. The whole idea was to do this podcast, and it's a means to way. So, do this podcast is a way to promote our own stuff, and that way get it out and promote other people's things. And it was almost like a like an independent thing. Mm -hmm. And it started back in like 2005 and six, I would say, like back when podcasts were around, but it wasn't like such a big, like there's so many podcasts now. And my partner, Sam, basically stepped away from comics. Uh, back in 09, he was like, I'm done with this. I'm going to step away for a little bit. So he was out for like about 10 years. So the, so the show died with him at that time. Okay. We actually, we, we kept in touch and he's always been around. And finally, last year, I was like, Sam, what's, are you coming back or what's going on? And he's like, you know what? I think I am. And he's like, let's start the Catch the Craze podcast again. And so it started again. So Catch the Craze is basically, it's a podcast to promote independence. Okay, mm -hmm. so we'll have independence. Like we had you on the show, just yep. talk to you guys about what you're doing, promote your product and, and put it out there so that people that may not know who you are now, you know, See you, and they're like, oh, wow, let me go check that out. 
And uh, yeah, we've been doing it uh, since the end of uh, last year. Maybe I would say September of last right. year. It's going okay. pretty well. And you, um, is it strictly on uh, on strictly on YouTube that you record and then the, post, or do you go other places? Yes. Yeah, so the the visuals, the the video itself is on YouTube. It's on our YouTube channel. It's mm-hmm. youtube.com forward slash catch the craze one. So subscribe okay. to that. And then the audio is on all, um, I you know, the whole podcast stuff and and all that stuff. Yeah, so. Spotify, iHeartRadio. Yeah, we got a comment here from, and and I'll apologize for the pronunciation of her name, of her last name. I I've met her, Daphne. Is it Lage? Is that how you say it? I'm I'm bad. Yeah. But the world could never have too many furry comics. So, <laughs> and I believe um, she draws a comic as well. She um, and I and. Can you remind me of the name of it? Because I, I I know I follow her work, but I, I'm blanking on the name of her comic right now. She's got Tall Tales. Tall Tales, yes. yes. I will I will have to have her on the show because yes. I will tell you a story. When I, and, and I'm sure I'll tell it again if I can get her on. When I was in, I believe, high school, I think it was like towards the end of my high school career, I grew up in Mayapak, New York. Mm-hmm. All right? Which is about, about an hour or so from New York City, north. There was a mall show at the Jefferson Valley Mall. It was the first Comic-Con I ever went to, I think. And they were there, and I bought a bunch. I bought a bunch. Oh, it's it's Lage, like Paige, sorry. Um, And I bought a bunch of the Tall Tale stuff, and I still have them in some of my boxes. I I, I love the work. I I think it was a fantastic... yeah. Fantastic book. I'm That's sorry. True. So it's she's so she says just so repeat it. Her last name is pronounced like Paige, so it's Lage, Daphne Lage. Fantastic yeah. work. Definitely. She, she actually did a rendition of uh, of Wonder Duck in her mm-hmm. YouTube channel. Like she drew it live on the YouTube channel, and it came oh. out. Yeah, it came out great. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, Daphne's awesome. She and her work, like you said, her work is it is far it's, none. Like it's, it's phenomenal. I mean. It really it's, is. The amount of detail that she goes into everything yeah. is just insane. Yeah, no, yeah. She, make she make sure you guys check her out. Um, her work is her work is fantastic. So, with the with the podcast, um, you've been doing it. You said since basically last September. Yeah. And uh, and and when you're saying last September, you don't mean 2019. You're going back to 2018. No, 2019. Oh, 2019. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and you do this weekly, or is it multiple times a week? So what we do is we, so because I live in New York and he's in Jersey and, you know, mm-hmm. just traveling back and forth, not that it's that far, but still, yeah. you know, and we work full-time jobs. Um, we get together twice a month on the okay. first week of the month and we record four shows that day. Okay. So we record the four shows and the show comes out every Friday after that. So it's a weekly show every Friday, but we'll record the four shows in two nights. And okay. that would be at the material for the entire month. Okay, so you sit in like the same room and, and yeah, everything. Because yeah, I remember being on the podcast, and you know, I see the I see the videos and everything, and uh, it looked like you guys were in two separate rooms because one was off in one corner and one was yeah, off in another. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're practicing uh, social distancing even back social. then. <laughs> we were like far away from each other. Yeah, no, but it, it looks like we're in separate rooms, but we're in the same room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, that's that's cool. And so, it's, but what the podcast is, is kind of what we're doing right now, trying to promote and and help out, uh, you know, help out independence because, you know, they, in my opinion, they they they're doing a lot more and more interesting work than what the mainstream is doing at the yeah. moment. Not yeah. to knock mainstream, but I just there's so yeah. many stories out there, and you know, mainstream can only tell so many. I feel like we we have the we we have the freedom to write whatever story we want. You know, whereas like I, sometimes I feel like the writers who are writing in the mainstream world are limited. They're like, okay, you can't write about this. You can't, you can't do that. You know what I mean? So we have that freedom where we can just tell whatever story we want and run with it. It's our story to tell. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, just to, just again to our audience, please feel free to ask questions. Um, I'll be happy to ask any. Um, you know, anything you have for for George here. In the meantime, though, um, let's talk about. Obviously, you said um, uh, Ducktales, Gizmo Duck inspired Wonder Duck, but let's go into your past right now. What kind of books did you read, or how? When did you get into comics? What inspired you to say I want to start making comics? Yeah, so 
I started, I mean, I, I was, I, I loved cartoons from the 80s, right? So like the G.I. Yeah, Joe and the Thundercats and the you exactly, know, yeah. Voltron, Transformers, like you can name, there's a bunch of them. And I, I loved, I loved watching those cartoons and, and, I, and I always wanted to, you know, kind of make them into still photos. And that's how I started doing these comics. I, I didn't start reading comics until I was maybe like 12 or 13 years old. And I think yeah. the comic I read was like a Thor comic. Okay. And, and so that's how I got into um, drawing and, 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 and doing my own comics. But I never wanted to draw anybody else's characters. I always wanted to create my own. Like I never wanted yeah. to work for anybody. I never wanted to draw. A that's G. exactly I, how I feel. Yeah, I wanted to do my own thing, create yeah. my own stuff and put my own stuff out there. I never wanted to work for anybody. You know, yes. and that's how I got into the whole comics thing. Just drawing my own stuff. You just know? Drawing your own stuff. We yeah. got a we got a question here from Joe Ryan. I'll put it up. Uh, hi, my name is Joe Ryan. Do you have any advice for a new comic creator trying to get his story out there? I'm trying to build a following. I'm trying to do a 40 page graphic novel, and it's a tough market out there right now. So, what advice? Oh, hold on, Mike just came back. I, I guess he had some issues. I want to add him back in. Yeah. Hey, we're back. hey, Joe Ryan, our biggest fan in the world. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we no. love Joe Ryan. Yes. So, no. what advice would you give? I think, I mean, persistence, right? Like, I think persistence is key in anything we do. And I'm, that, that just sounds very broad. But I think that if you don't have that persistence, this the industry and any industry, they will kill you because it'll just, it'll beat you down until you can't take it anymore. And I think that you have to be strong and resilient enough to say, you know what, I believe in this story, I'm gonna put this story out and I'm gonna push it as hard as I can. Now, now you have the internet, now you have Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you have so many avenues that you can mm -hmm. put these things everywhere in everybody's face and say, hey, look at my stuff, look at my stuff, look at my stuff and just be relentless with it. You know, It's just about being just a, a relentless person that just goes out and just, Read my book, check it out. You're gonna love it. You know exactly, exactly. I don't, I don't disagree. I will say, I'm just gonna add. Um, yeah. When you first get something that you're ready to, to promote, this is something I did. I talked with friends and families of mine, and I said, "Hey, look, can you just share this on your social media? You know, um, and then this way, if they did that, it reached people that I'm not connected with, right. and that was something that was good to do. I also. Um, I also recommend um, putting a link to it in your email. At the end, have a signature that has a link to whether it's your social media, a website that has information about the comic, get people interested just anywhere you can. Like I have a video, a little video at the end of my um, email. It's a little signature and it's it's a uh, it's a little advertisement for me that says I do graphic design and comics and all this stuff and it's a little little video I made. Um, this way, when people see me at the end, they can be like, "Oh, this guy also does this," and yeah. they can go to my websites at the end and see. So that's good. Uh, Daphne adds, "The most passionate work is being made by indies." I completely agree, and we got we all have that in common. Uh, it's never been about working for someone else; it's about putting. Our, out our own creator own material which i agree with but at the which same time we, which is why we do the in credit chat is to exactly. uh mm -hmm. promote um other folks i mean certainly I, I don't know when you were on the podcast i mean if you talked more get in tune or in credit chat but certainly we if we can get on there uh you're having a little sound issues but i will i, I think i know what mike wants to say and when i was on there we pitched i, I talked about get in tune which is my own personal cartooning mm -hmm. brand but I talked about Incredicon, how we formed Incredicon, that we were supposed to have one last weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I talked about both things, but I was there just talking about kind of my background and, and my educational background and, and things like that. Yeah. Um, I didn't really pitch any comics because I haven't been making comics, although this quarantine time is, has That's given the me the opportunity yeah. to start. Yeah. To start putting my there projects no, together. There are zero excuses after something like this. <laughs> yes, zero. Uh, excuses, yeah. I mean, I can make up excuses. I've been learning a new software. I've been, but it's <laughs> the truth is, I you know, it's it now is the time. Now is the time to if you have a project, put it together, show people, and and you know, put it out there. You know, the the website Webtoon might be a great place to start building someone before you spend money. Yeah. 
to print a book. You know, printing costs a lot. You know, if you go to things like uh, Kablam or another site, they're going to charge you a lot of money and they're going to have a minimum order you have to pay. You go to a website like Webtoon or create your own website or just make it an Instagram comic or something. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier to build followers that mm -hmm. way. And, um, and I think that is the way at the moment, since comics aren't being able to get to stores right now, and you really can't get to stores to buy your comics and diamonds, not shipping and all this stuff, put it out on the web, build your following that way for free and then collect it with extra material and sell it. I think that might be the smart choice at the moment, yeah. you know? Definitely. So I think it's important also that we we support each other as creators, right? As exactly. Artists, there's no reason why we should not be supporting each other. There's no reason yeah. why I should not let you in on what I know, and you shouldn't let me in on the things that you know. You, you understand? Yeah. Like I, I just feel like we should be helping each other out because what are we afraid of? What what what, what, yeah. what are we being against? You know? Yeah. No, that that thing. Talk. You know, there's yeah. very few, and I've said this I don't know how many times. Very few comic creators I've met. That I can honestly say I think are jerks. Yeah. You know, um, I you know mostly when you you know I've talked to pros, I've talked to independents, I've talked to whatever, and the majority of them they're just cool. You know, you go you go sit down, they're willing to go sit down and have lunch with you. You know, or or whatever. You you do a con, and you're sitting next to someone at a con, and what do you do? You become table buddies with them, yeah. and now and now all of a sudden you're on social media, you're hanging out, you're talking or whatever. Yeah. You know, and and everyone's there to just just have a good time to sell their work. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is still a business. That's the one thing. And, and maybe you want to talk about this on cons. I enjoy cons mostly for interacting with, with friends of mine. I don't get to see often. It's cool to talk to fans, but at the end of the day, it's work. It and, and it's, it's incredibly tiring to be behind that table for however many hours and, you know, watching people pass you by or whatever. And, and just like you want to talk and you want to sell yeah. And and although you're having a good time, you still got to remember, I paid money for this table. Mm -hmm. I paid money for the printing of my books, my travel, my food, my hotel, whatever it is. So being a salesman, which like you said, you guys were earlier, is a yeah. fantastic thing. So yeah. being a good salesman is 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 a key too. Um, it's, it's important. I think you, you have to go in there with the mindset to say, okay, listen, I'm going to be at this place. It's and I want to walk around and I want to enjoy it and I want to see what's out there and I want exactly. to get the signatures. But you're no longer a fan. Once yeah. you pay for that table, now it's mm -hmm. like you said, it's a business and you have to act like it is. It's an eight hour day. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you're probably longer than that. But you're going to be, and you're probably going to be standing and talking to people all day and, hey, how you doing? Come here. Let me talk to you about my book. And, oh, yeah. I'll come back. Oh, yeah. And I'm just doing my first round. I'll be back after this first round. And you're like, yeah. all right. <laughs> a little bit yeah yeah i just want to let people who are who are who if they haven't done shows yet or or whatever just realize that that is an important part um go in there excited because if you're excited people will be excited for you you know it's that whole salesman thing you have a smile people will smile back yeah. you know um any other type of advice you'd give for cons um i think that well especially when it comes to printing books right i I've worked with Kablam. I've worked, you know, I've had this was printed through Kablam, and mm -hmm. you know, there was another company called I think it was Comics Well Springs or something like that. But I think that if you're if you know that you're doing a show in in March, then you should mm -hmm. send your books out to the printer say in February. Give them about a month to get your books printed because the last thing you want to do is the show is coming and your books are still not in. Yeah. So yeah. You definitely want to plan ahead and and, yes. and do that kind of um, legwork. Um, I think that with, even with like the social networks and things like that, I think that you should promote obviously ahead of time that you're going to be at these shows where they can find you so that you're not just, well, who are you guys? No, you actually have people that are planning to go and see you at the yeah. show. I actually have issues with that. It's, it's funny yeah. because I, I worked for a college and I helped create a social media marketing class for artists and I taught it for two years. Uh -huh. But when it comes to me doing my stuff, I right. totally, it's like, oh, I'm going to be at a show tomorrow. I got to remember to, <laughs> to yeah. post, you know, um, Greco press. Was that the name of it? Annabelle? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. I forgot. How do you, how do you say the name? And, and I, again, this is another guy I know. And I, I totally blank 
on on the correct pronunciation. Is that uh, what? Anibal. Anibal. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm sorry. I I'm bad with 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 names. I know Face as well, and he's a great guy. And you just had him on your podcast, and I yeah. I had it came out today. I haven't had a chance to listen to it yet. I've been busy all day, but I do plan to uh, to listen to it. Yeah, no, Aníbal. I've known Aníbal for years. Yeah, we've been, yeah. we've been doing this thing together for years as well. And yeah, okay. he can attest to some of the stuff that yeah. that uh, he's yeah. an animal. Animal, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, he's well. I, I think I first. I don't remember if it was. Um, I think we met first time at Kids Comic Con, and that's probably where I met you because I remember yeah. you being at a Kids Comic Con. Um, yeah. Good friend Alex Simmons. And Alex Simmons, who Alex we Simmons. will hope to have on here sometime yeah. soon. Um, it's already in the works. It's already in the works. That's great. Yeah, um, great. So, but yeah, I think that's where I met you guys because you all table together usually, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Um, I think when I met you, I was I was walking around. I hadn't. I didn't have a table that that year, but I was walking around. Came out the yellow, the yellow pops. Like yeah, you know, I, like, I do a lot of yellow on my table. Well, yeah. I've changed since then, but in the past, I did a lot of because that's the thing. I mean, you can look at my studio background. Yeah. It, it's a yellow yeah. room. Your altar. My he calls it my altar now because I have a couple of <laughs> I have I do like I do uh, one big like black me. tablecloth. I have two table. Um, I guess they call them runners that come that hang in the front, and then I got another runner that goes across. So uh, it, it's really to add color and make it pop. But um, but uh, but yeah, he he calls it my altar, and I guess it could look like one. Um, yeah. So Annabelle says I gave his son free artwork, which I do a lot for kids. Yeah. Um, so I hope I hope he I hope he enjoyed it. Um, I do a lot of a lot of free stuff for kids at shows sometimes. Um, actually, a few months ago was it November? I did the uh, the Doctor Who con in Long Island, Li Who, and I did nothing all day but uh, draw for free for anybody who wanted kids, yeah. adults. It was cool, it was a good it was a good time. I was busy all day because I had the word free above me, but yeah. <laughs> it was a, it was a fun time. So anytime I could do, I could do stuff for kids. I'm, I'm very happy to. Awesome. Um, so let's see, I'm just going through the, 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 the comments in case I missed something. Uh, you, said you, you guys met at a con in Jersey or something. Who? I knew I was oh, some, some con in, at a Jersey hotel. Was that a um, who put on hotel shows in Jersey? Was that uh, maybe JP? Was that a JP show? There are so many shows. That's I know, but but the hotel know. shows, because JP, um, he's a good friend of mine. He um, he puts on, I think it's, I'm, why am I blank on new? I think it's the NJ, is it NJ Comic Con or NJ Comic Fest? I apologize for not getting it right, but he puts on a, he puts on a few shows a month. Yeah. Um, in, in like Clifton and in Wayne and in, um, somewhere else. And I haven't been to his shows in a while, but it's actually a pretty fun show. It's small. It's he, they, they do a great, um, what's the word I'm looking for auction there. So you can get some cool stuff at the auction. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's, 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 it's cool. All right. Um, so let's go back, uh, Let's go back to uh, actually, you know, before we go back, I wanted to go back to Wonder Duck real quick. But before we do that, Wonder Duck, I, I did ask you about um, comics. You know, like what inspired you, and you said you started reading, and Thor was probably your first book. Are you reading any books right now? And um, and yeah. if so, what are you recommending? Whether it's mainstream, independent. Um, actually, I ha I'm not reading anything uh, mainstream right now. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I read a book called Coyote, uh, Coyotes. Okay. Um, yeah, the artist on it is actually her name escapes me now, but uh, it's it's a great great. I think Sean Lewis is the writer on okay. it. Coyotes, yeah. And uh, Caitlin, I believe is her name, Caitlin Yarsky. She's a yeah. great artist. It, that book I recommend, Coyotes. Um, and I, I, you know, I've been I've been doing like so much like I'm trying to get into more into the writing. That I haven't really had a chance to go out there and just, you know, read any mainstream, either whether it's mainstream or independent. Yeah. But uh, I, I think that with the time that I have now, I probably will pick up some books. I, I'll, I usually go on like whatever website it is, whether it's Image, mm -hmm. whether it's you know, Image has a lot of great, you know, just uh, books by. Not I, I don't know who I call independents, but 
Definitely had some good time. I, I would call Image still independent. Yeah. I mean, they are, you know, they, they're kind of the mainstream of independence these days, but, you know, everything is still creator owned. So it's not, yeah. it's yeah. not like, um, you know, Image owns the stuff. They just kind of give it, you know, advice and take, you know, money for, you know, whatever they, whatever their percentage is. So yeah. um, the, the writer, yeah. artist, whatever creative team yeah. that, that they hire, you know, that, that put the book together. They're the ones who are who are making the cash. You know, right. they're the ones who own the rights to it. Yeah. So um, now, Wonder Duck. I want to get back that. Can you hold up the picture? I want to get a clear shot of it for everybody. There he is. A little. Hold on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give. I you see a little bit of the. Yeah. I'm gonna give you the screen real quick. Hold on. I like the shades um, though. On them. The shades are great. Yeah. Bring it up a little bit. See now that is that is awesome. It's very Captain Marvel esque to me, yeah. like old school, you know, Captain Marvel back when he was Marvel. You know, um, yeah. I love that. I love that yeah. look. Can I love you show some? Work yeah. Some yeah show some stuff. of the interiors. Yeah. Yeah. Like open up to that page right there. Oh, um, can you make it? A, you know, center it a little more there. There you go. See, I think that's fantastic. I love yeah. the work. Yeah, they're amazing, love, man. They're yeah. amazing artists. And you said the artist's name is? Well, it's a studio. So when oh. I was working with them, they were they were called Big Cat Studios. They've changed the name of the studio since, and they're now called Nine Lives Animation. So oh, they're in oh, an wow. animation studio now. Yeah, I'll show you one more page in there. Okay. Wow. Yeah, nice. their artwork is so, it, it's it's crazy. It's like, it's going <laughs> to be animated, essentially. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh. Yeah, I'm very happy with the work that they did, and they're they're pretty fast too, man. Like, I, you know, you ask them, and they can pretty much. Wow. Hold on, let me give you the screen again so you can see it a little better. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. <coughs> yeah, their attention to detail and the way they color, like, it. I was when every time I got a page from them, I was just like, "Holy cow, look at that page!" So it's it's very, you know, it, it, like I said, it just lends itself to be animated, and I just. I was very, yeah. very happy, and they're actually working on the uh, second part of the of the story now, so that hopefully will be out um, sometime next year. Okay. And do you fund these through Kickstarter or? Not, not currently. I, I okay. should, but um, but and and I think that I, I will uh, start up next year once all the all the artwork is in. I, that's that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that I may go the Kickstarter route. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm green when it comes to that, so I'm gonna have to do a lot of research. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, um, to that, that Dan actually is really good at that kind of stuff. So I may have to have a conversation. Who's really? I'm sorry. Who's really good? Daphne. 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 Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. She's um, good it, mm. So, getting back to the studio, real quick. Do they just do the drawing, like pencil color, or do they actually lay out the book for you and get it set up for the printer? Yeah. No, so what I did, and, and, I, and I do this with all my books, I don't, I stopped drawing a long time ago, but I'll still design my own characters. So I'll send them character sheets and I'll say, this are the characters, just draw them in your, in your style. And yeah. they'll take care of the, uh, the pencils, inks, and colors. And okay. then they'll send me those, those sheets back, I'll letter it, and I'll send it to the printer. I take care of all the post-production after that. Okay. okay. Yeah, so they do the, the pencils, inks, and colors, and then I do everything else on the back end. All right. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that's a nice way to work. Yeah, yeah. So all I'm really doing is just lettering and then just sending it up to the printers and you know, obviously approving the pages and things like that. But it works. It works really well. You know. Yeah. I don't know if you can see that. Daphne says you need yeah. to get on Kickstarter. All the cool kids are there. <laughs> I, I'd I'd like to get on on uh, Kickstarter soon. And Joe Joe says he's trying to do a yeah. comic and animated style. Yes. Yeah. Which is which is fantastic. I that that's what I tend to lean towards for my illustration style too. And uh, I, and when I color, I kind of sell shade more, so it's more animation. Um, but yeah, no, that that's that's great. I love I love that type of stuff. And it keeps. And what I like about it is it it kind of keeps to the the influences of the animation work yeah. when you were a kid. Yeah. Um, so. Um, all right. I, just looking again and see if there was any more comments. Yeah. So uh, let's see. We got um, we got Wonder Duck, which I'm actually really interested in, and I can get it off Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, wherever it is. Which yeah. I think I'm going to order because um, <laughs> nice. I'm, I'm. What am I doing? You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm old. You're going to have to wait a month, though, like you told me. 
Oh, uh, they're, they're getting a little, little closer, but yeah, they, I think comics and books are still like a month apart, but yeah. we've, we've been getting Amazon deliveries now. Yeah. Um, but not, um, it, it has been some stuff that, that are, you know, more like necessities, but yes. we've been getting yeah. a few things now that aren't on the main, you know, the main list of necessities. So I don't know if it's because we ordered them earlier or what, but uh, yeah. we put an order in just the other day and it says, oh, you're going to get it by the 6th. I don't even know what we ordered. My wife does a lot of the Amazon ordering. I always have to be like, I'm going to order a comic off Amazon. That's that's what I buy. I buy books. I buy my... my um, what do they call it? Uh, you know, like the, the art of books. I love going through the art of books. Um, got a lot of Disney. I got some Pixar. I got, uh, I got Lord of the Rings. I got everything. You know, I love that stuff. Um, and, and they're just so inspiring, but, um, okay. Uh, no, Joe was saying, I'm really considering doing a Kickstarter Daphne, um, which that's great. I mean, get it together and, and, and I'll just give you this little bit of advice. Try to build that following because the better following you have, the more you're going to get people going to your Kickstarter page. And at the same time, they will share that Kickstarter page. So if you have fans, they will help you out. Uh, So I think before you actually jump into Kickstarter, spend time building the following. It could take a month. It could take six years. I don't know. Um, It's just how, how persistent you are on posting. And but, hopefully um, that, that's what will happen with Wonder Dog. Like, I, you know, I, it's the first part of it, you know, kind of starts it off. And then that way I'll be able to just get the uh, second part done that way. So, yeah, hopefully yeah. that works out. Um, I got to think for a second because I lost my train of thought. I wanted to get somewhere with Wonder Duck with you. But, um, but uh, sorry, I'm blanking at the moment. I guess I had a little brain fart. Uh, Mike, do you have any questions for, for George? Um, no, I'm just kind of digging like the animation style in that Wonder Duck book. Yeah, uh, no, it's it's to, it's uh, fantastic. I um, do you plan to maybe do an animation with him? I I, I want yes, I I do. I want to, and that's that that'll definitely be a Kickstarter because they always they they talk to me all the time. They're like George, this looks like we can animate, and I'm like yeah, but it's also very expensive. So let me get the money together. And like, you know, it's not just oh, you guys are gonna do it free. That's cool. No, it's not. Yeah, it, no. you know, I'm gonna have to get this money together. So. Yeah, but definitely, I, I would love to see something like this, obviously, you know, and I just feel like kids, and I'm going to sound like an old man, they, mm-hmm. the cartoons that we grew up on, they, mm-hmm. just, they just aren't there anymore. They, they, you know, like that. Yeah, that is it, very true. Right? Yeah. It's just not, I, I remember, like, we, we rattled off a bunch of names of just cartoons, and I can't name, I mean, I'm not a look anymore, but I can't name one that resonates the same well. And I think that it'd be nice to bring some of this stuff back. You know? Yeah, it's, you know, what I, you know, I, I kind of live a bit in the animation world and I, um, I've watched, a, a, I try to watch some of the cartoons that are out now and, and you're right there. They're not the same. They're very different. And that's because the way of animation changed. They mm-hmm. went more to, we were talking about this before we went on about flash, which is now Adobe animate, but they have what we call puppet animation, which is done in flash and harmony mm-hmm. and other software. And most characters now, they're working through puppet animation because it's cheaper, it's easier, um, it can be quicker to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And because of that, you're not getting as much of that reaction. So a lot of cartoons now, you can listen to it, you can close your eyes and listen to it almost like it's a radio show. And and, I mean, don't get me wrong, you can go back and watch Bullwinkle and you have that that feeling, watching old Bullwinkles. It's very radio show-like. But I feel more and more cartoons have gotten that way. Hmm. Even, even um, what I know a lot of people, this is something I enjoy, but people hate, Teen Titans Go. I like the silliness of the style. I like the silliness of the humor. I'm not a fan of Mike's it. not a fan of it, but... <laughs> the movie was okay. Yeah, the movie I thought was fun, but a lot of people are like, I want to watch the original Teen Titans. I, only watch, I don't even like the original one. But the ori- no no but hold on when people are talking about the original yeah. they're talking about the what is the mid two thousands that came out I think it was mm. but if we go back the I'm originals appeared in the sixties in filmation where they were no, like just like- nothing That's moved. Not that good either. Um. So Daphne. Those aren't that good either. 
no, though, though the filmation stuff is was terrible, but I have a little place in my heart because of how much I love filmation. But Daphne <laughs> says, my, my thing is a lot of cartoons now feel like they skew too young for me to appreciate. And I completely agree with you. Um, I checked out the new Thundercats when it, when it appeared. Oh, yeah. And, and I, you know, I, 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 this, my opinion of that was I didn't like it. But was I the audience? No. It's not something that is made for me. And if I want to watch the Thundercats that I enjoy, I will watch the Thundercats that I enjoyed as a child. Um, right. And it goes for all the stuff that they're revamping. Nothing, nothing's like the old stuff. You know, it, you know. Although I will say this, I think it's what twenty twenty one or maybe twenty twenty two. They announced that they're going to bring back Animaniacs. Are they? Yeah, someone's yeah. got. And if that's going to actually happen, that was like my favorite cartoon back in the nineties. That really got no, me into all the Disney afternoon shows were your favorite. Make up your mind. No, no, no. Disney afternoon was <laughs> my, I, I will explain. Hold on. Disney afternoon was okay. my favorite time. Um, because when I was, uh, when I was a kid, they had these good, you know, two hours of cartoons. I mean, we're all around the same age. So we all had these two hours of cartoons and it was just fun. But Animaniacs did for me what I think Looney Tunes did in the past for other people. I grew up loving Looney Tunes, but I feel the Animaniacs was my Looney Tunes. They commented about people that I knew about, that I was familiar with, instead of, you know, looking at caricatures of Humphrey Bogart that, you know, I have to look up who is that person and I realize who it is later on in life after watching Bogart movies, you know? But all of a sudden now they're, 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 they're attacking politicians and the president was in the intro and you know what I mean? Like these were the people that I knew. And the humor was was at an at, at the time something that was kind of like classic Looney Tunes, where it was great stuff for kids, but adults can be in there, teens got on a certain list. So there's there was such a wide thing. The Disney afternoon did not do that. They just gave me fun adventures. Right. You know? Were you the one that posted that about the Looney Tunes or the, the Animaniacs on, 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 on Facebook, uh, Mike? There's, there's a good what, chance I posted it was like an art, it was like an article about how when they were about to debut the Animaniacs, they put like they put uh, I think it was Wacko up on the tower. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, yeah and, and the owner of the of the, one of those like take did, take Mickey Mouse off of the top yes, of the yes. tower. Yes, yes. I did. I did post that. I don't know if you posted it as well, Mike. Um, yeah, no, I, that's a that's an old story. I mean, like yeah. Rob and Rob Paulson has talked about that on his podcast a bunch of times. Yeah. Um, yeah. That it was literally up there for like a day, and yeah. yeah um, the 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 head of the studio saw that and he's like, "Why is Mickey Mouse sitting on a water tower? Take that down right away!" Yeah, and yeah. there and there's pictures of it online, so you can so you can see it. Yeah, but they did, but they definitely they they didn't like you said the Animaniacs did something for like one of it. It kind of just brought in a new a new wave of kids to start yeah. watching their 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 work, um, and I think that was good for them. But uh, yeah, all right. Um... We're going to wrap up soon, but before we wrap up, does anybody have any other questions for George? All right. We'll give a moment to think, but I will say, um, and I still can't remember the question I, I had about Wonder Dog, so I'll, I'll, I'll probably ask you offline just because it's interesting yeah, to fine. me when I remember. Um, but I will say, I've, I, it was great chatting with you, getting to know you more about your background. I mean, we've talked outside, you know, in the real world sometimes, but I didn't know as much as I did. I love hearing about inspirations, the advice you gave to Joe and, and everybody else out there. Um, completely fantastic. And if you have room at some point, I know Mike and I would love to come on your podcast, yeah. catch the craze and talk about what we do with Incredicon. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, Don't be a hog now. You were already on there once. Yeah. <laughs> but he did invite me back. Don't worry. <laughs> For sure, definitely. Now, you guys, are you, um, I know that everything's on, on standby right now, but when, your shows usually come out in the summer and then in the fall? We will be back in October and then back in March again. So yes. okay. the Incredit King will be back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for the title, Mike. Uh, yeah, Incredit King. Incredit King on mine. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, none of the display names work. I'm sorry. Oh. <laughs> I'll have to make a little graphic. A little graphic. <laughs> so... Um, well, it doesn't look like anyone else has questions. Oh, hold on. It was an oh, it was an awesome stream. Thank you, guys. That's from Joe Ryan. You're very welcome. 
Um, and I'm just going to make a little plug for myself that on Sunday at 3 p.m. on my YouTube page, so just look me up on YouTube at Michael Gracia, I will be uh, doing an interview. It's really for the kids at the school I work for, but everyone's welcome. I'll be interviewing our uh, animation historian, uh, Jerry Beck. And I want, you know, and you guys are welcome to come and have questions if you do, but um, I set this up for kids. So we're going to kind of keep it very, uh, very kid friendly, very, um, very uh, just kitty, you know, more kitty cartoons, things for a younger audience. Um, but he didn't so, work on those shows. What? He didn't work on those shows. I know what he didn't, I, what that he didn't, but he's a historian. I want the idea is to teach the kids about animation, the history of animation. So, again, George, thanks a lot. No problem. Hey, you're I, gonna to my uh, website. I was about to. I was about to ask you to do that. So, um, <laughs> yeah, if you want to check out more of my stuff and uh, you know about me and, and about my my work, go to uh, Medina with WIP Work in Progress. So it's Medina Work in Progress. Medina with dot com check that out i'm on instagram as medina whip and i'm also on facebook uh look up george medina with a j and you'll find me there so thanks so much guys i really appreciate you uh opening up your chat to me and uh i had fun it was great thanks right. thanks thanks we'd love to have you back when you've got yeah. more projects to talk about absolutely and you'll be on the uh, on the catch the crease podcast coming soon so thanks so, thanks. So, thanks we look forward to it thank All you right. very much for coming in tonight george all right. All right. Have a great night, man. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.